and for being on time. Um, we apologize for being late. With me today, I have a landscape architect all the way from Cape Town, where currently she's practicing in Johannesburg at a practice called Outlook Architects. We specialize in landscape architecture. She's got a master's in landscape architecture and in the practice, right? So I'm just going to hand it over to her. Can we please give a round of applause for Ms. Kuzama? Good, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Tozana and I'll be speaking on landscape architecture. How many are familiar with the field? It's just sort of raise an indication. So we're going to learn a lot. Um, so I'll be speaking on pattern and place. I, my approach to design is art. So this is my So my approach to this presentation will be through art, very visual images to explain everything. I was born in Cape Town, South Africa, and from a young age I traveled. Um, traveling through to the Eastern Cape from the Western Cape, and this made me familiar with landscapes. Uh, the changes over the years, uh, the ages between towns, farms, cities, nations, all the different environments. Um, and also people and how they use these spaces and how they move from one space to another. I grew up thinking that the garden root So I grew up thinking the garden leaf, which is the N2, which runs along the coast, was the most serene, beautiful space. But then as I um, grew older, the inland was something beautiful. It was, um, yes, the, even inland where you have the N1 stretching from Cape Town to Johannesburg, has, it's a beautiful, um, as well. It is where the climate changes, you have very, very hot days, and then all of a sudden you have a thunderstorm cooling the area. Um, so through the travels, music would always be playing in the car. The lights of Wilson Room, Rima Keva, Huma Sikela, and Paul Simon. And this really even took me to other towns and cities, especially in Africa, where you have songs and where the musicians describe all the different areas specifically in Africa. Um, so your mind can really travel beyond where you're from. Um, a landscape architect um, is often described as an artist and a gardener. Um, many people hate the word gardener, but it's really something to embrace as what you do in the garden there is so, um, is so effective. You can yield so much from the space. My favorite landscape architect and who I um, draw inspiration from is Roberto Bole Marx. He is Brazilian, from, born in 1904. Um, and then passed away in 1994. He is, works with public urban space designer. That's what he describes himself as. He was a painter, a printmaker, an ecologist, naturalist, artist, and musician. So all of these aspects, these vibrant, colorful patterns are evident in his work where he works with urban spaces within the city looking at vegetation, where people walk, how people access different spaces and also um, where transport, um, public transport, how it interacts with the city. You can see here when you're looking at his plan, how it then translates physically into pattern, a boulevard, and priority is given to the pedestrian, to people who walk, to people who cycle. They have um, 
enough space to do these activities. He also embraced the indigenous planting of Brazil. Um, he lived in a time where the English rose was a popular plant and the English garden was always to refer to when looking at spaces. He um, changed this by working with his vibrant patterns, vibrant um, colors and also plants from Brazil. One um, important aspect of landscape architecture is scale. We work on various scales and how we can manipulate these scales, how we can map and identify them is by the use of technology and by hand. I did this um, work, this painting over here, and then through a computer program called SketchUp, I was able to manipulate these spaces and then imagine what it could become and what scenarios they become. Also looking at the spaces in between the various forms, um, yes. So when you work with forms or buildings, it's normally a blank canvas. Um, the building is what's dominant, and then the spaces in between, or the spaces where people interact outside the buildings, are often left blank or as what needs to be filled in. So then this is just kind of how the blueprint a blueprint you have with urban design is just form and buildings and road. Yeah. Now, when an opportunity arises for a landscape architect to work with these forms, you then can start introducing vegetation, trees, shrubs, and ground covers, which makes the space exciting and vibrant. This is spaces where people can interact, where people have um, safe walking, people have access to um, buildings, and also where cycling take, can take place and play. Now, moving on to a, a larger scale, one of the projects I've worked with is the Cradle of Humankind, which is a World Heritage Site. It's using a tool of mapping to get what the character of the landscape is. What was mapped um, in this process was where the buildings are, where agricultural household um, holdings are, where the ridges are. So it creates all these layers of the map will get, then give you what the specific area consists of for future development where guidelines can, guidelines can be placed. Um, this is also a technique used to draw the character of the area. Um, also working with um, water treatment and many of our water bodies are polluted or they've been neglected. When you introduce vegetation, one can start clearing this water and also introducing wildlife and planting and greening up the area. We normally turn our backs towards our, our streams or water bodies that run through the city, but then introducing fauna and flora really opens up the space and opens up opportunity. Um, I had the opportunity to visit Kampala in 2017, Kampala in Uganda, where we also did a mapping exercise at a large um, scale of the city, but then zooming in into detail. Kampala is a very, very vibrant, exciting um, city with many um, religious sites as tourist attractions. So you learn the city through its religious sites where you can learn about the different people, the different cultures, um, and also its history. I visited when, if you're familiar with the song by French Montana, he had just shot a music video there. So this was like the soundtrack of the trip. He shot, and this then showed the cultural as aspect of dance and music and people gathering. I um, enjoy going out. I love music. So one of the things we did on one of our nights there was we explored the streets. 
which has they, then when I decided what I would focus on, I said I'm going to focus on the nightlife. Um, many projects are orientated to be done during the day, so I was the one student who was like, I'm going to focus on the night time. I then um, proceeded to map areas we had visited and then look at the different nodes and how these spaces can improve. I basically then looked at how pattern um, could then identify where social interaction can take place, um, where people can gather and then where people can also get the transport which is this motorcycle called the Boda Boda. This was also another exploration of pattern with these areas. Um, many areas where the nightlife happens are a bit hidden. You can't really see, so how to identify that this was a space where activity takes place. Um, then also looking at how people would then enter and then also where transportation would be taken. And that's just another sketch. So one of, the, one of the nightclubs had an ambulance that was permanently stationed there because um, that's how they enjoyed the nightlife so much. But it was never used, it was just for precaution. So that was just an indication how the nighttime is, um, should be focused on of how we move around during the night, how do we get safely to where we're going and back, and also where different, um, there's opportunity for business to take place. Food stores outside, um, people who are musicians, DJs, etc. This is their time. So how do we enhance this experience? Now, starting to work, I've worked with municipalities where we've been implementing parks and upgrading parks. Working um, in the field, you don't only look at a clean, a new, a blank of a site. Sites that are existing, that are dilapidated, um, possess so much opportunity just by simple, um, simple interventions. This is one of the parts. This one was the, a blank slate. This was a park in Palm Ridge, um, just south of Johannesburg, where you have a residential area with no open green spaces, but you have so many schools around and school children walking around where this then possesses a way where children can um, walk through the site safely going to or from school. There's an amphitheater, a gathering space. There is um, activities for braai. Um, there's activities for BMX or cycling, etc. And What's exciting about a park is that you can use so many different shapes for the activities to take place. You can make it exciting and bold to, that you identify this is a park, this is for people. That's just another image. Okay. So this is the climbing wall where children can um, run through, play around. There will be playground um, equipment around and also one can climb above, and it really gives a nice view of the entire space. So, so with the climbing wall, there's an opportunity also now to paint it, and um, what would be interesting and fun is how you can have letters painted onto the wall of the climbing wall. So when children are playing there and learning, they have these bold letters where they can identify and you know, play with each other and point out certain letters. So education is a factor that can be um, integrated into these spaces. Um, this is a skateboard park in Murray Park. It's in Springs. This was, um, there was no, it's an existing park but over the years it hasn't been used. Now with the introduction, we introduced a skateboard park, um, bright facilities as well, and then also a community center, and then also a dance floor. So community events can happen within the park and it also, um, people from various ages, ladies, men, children, everyone have an opportunity to do an activity at the park. 
Also, there was an opportunity now to just not have a plain skateboard park, but to actually put a pattern on it, to make it a landmark, to make a statement. So, many pat this is a pattern that has been done on a program called AutoCAD, and then you hand this pattern over to the contractor, who is able then to paint the pattern onto the skateboard park, making it very exciting. And that's just a few more images. So this is just an, an example of the a climbing wall which has been painted on. And you can already see the park hasn't been completed, but it's an attraction already where you have people taking pictures, people wanting to go there and sharing their experience. Um, so closing, that open spaces, um, in communities are a place for integration, they're a place for gathering, they're a place for active and passive activities. It's a place um, to improve accessibility where trade and entertainment can take place. Um, through working with the community, um, the, it's an opportunity for people's voices to be heard. What needs to, you can, simple question, what does this area need? What facilities would you like? Um, people can, people are the users of the site. So if you have them having a buy-in and know about the project from an early stage, they will really take care of the space. And yeah, so if there are any questions or comments, I'm, yeah, please, please share.